service. For those that are online, we thank God for you joining us as well. Um, we ask that you would share. Uh, if you're on here, share it with someone. Make a comment. Let us know that you are actually watching. Hallelujah. By saying amen or whatever comment you want to put down that pertains to the word, just put it in the comment section. You know, we like when you like it, but we also like when you share it. So we ask that you would share with us this word today. Hallelujah. I thank God for the opportunity to stand before you to minister this word. I thank God for my wife. Hallelujah. Thank God for each and every one of you. But today we're going to be talking out of Genesis, the 28th chapter, um, 10 through 22. It's going to be where we're going to pull our lesson from today. But we're going to be talking about between a rock and a hard place. I know you have heard that before, between a rock and a hard place. Hallelujah. Between a rock and a hard place. Now, no, normally when people think about between a rock and a hard place, they think about two rough places. There's a hard place here, and then there's a rock. So I'm stuck between the two of them. But here, this rock, we're going to be talking about. Hallelujah. You're going to be glad you're between the rock and the hard place if you choose the rock. Come on. Because the rock we're talking about is not just an average rock. It's not a regular rock. It's not an ordinary rock. Hallelujah. What we talk about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Between a rock and a hard place. So let's go to Genesis, the 28th chapter, uh, starting at verse 10. Just stand for the first scripture, then afterward you may be seated. And it reads, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. You may be seated. And he lit upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Now in my research, I found that certain place was the same place that Abraham had went to. And he built an altar there, a memorial there. It seemed like, you know, you can know when God is in a place. All right. Hallelujah. That's why your grandmama was in that particular church, because she knew that God would show up there. Right. Hallelujah. But when God wasn't showing up there, then she stopped coming there. Right. And so, therefore, he said, and he lit it upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Yeah. Because the sun was set, and he took of the stones of that place and he put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And this is where I want to pull out between a rock and a hard place. He said because uh, the sun was set and he had took of the stones of that place. Now that don't mean he made a bunch of stones and made it into a pillow. It means that out of those stones, he took a stone and he laid it there and then he used his headdress and he used some of his clothing to make it softer for his pillow. Come on. And he put that down as his pillow and then the Bible says he put them for his pillow and laid down in that place to do what? To sleep. Hallelujah. But watch this. Let's get the background of it. Is that when we go to verse 12, you want to find out before we get there that the reason why Jacob is laying out here in this cold place, in this desert place, is because he was on the run. Right. He was uh, he was uh, he was traveling between a rock and a hard place. Oh, yeah. Well, he was going from a hard place and now he was going towards the rock. Right. And the rock, the, the hard place was Esau. See, Jacob, he had went from Bathsheba, but he had went on the vice of his father and his mother. Right. Because Jacob had just got finished taking Esau's blessing. That's it. He already took his birthright earlier when he sold it for a, a, a bowl of soup. You know, some pottage, some lentil, some beans. Because uh, Esau was a hunter. One thing about Esau, he was a hunter. But also, it's a little bit more background to it is that Esau was the oldest or the elder of twins. And they were frater fraternal twins. That means they wasn't identical. Esau was hairy. He, he was a big, he, he was a, a beastly like man. He was a hunter. But we find that Jacob was a soft one. He, he was more good to look upon. In other words, Jacob uh, was being more like a mama's boy, and Esau would be like a daddy's boy. Right. Hallelujah. And David, I mean, uh, Jacob, uh, hallelujah, uh, Rebecca loved Jacob. Mm -hmm. 
But Isaac loved Esau. Come on, come on. So Esau was his pride and joy, right? But he was also the elder one. He was an aggressive man. He, he was a hunter. And he was a pride of his father. He was also called the father of the Edomites because they called him Edom. That's right. And, and so you find out all these struggles between the Edomites and the Israelites. It's still a fight between Esau and Jacob. Come on, come on. You better watch out. Hallelujah. If you don't resolve some issues in your lineage. If you don't resolve some issues in your family. Your children will fight against their cousins. That's it. That's it. Amen. And so Jacob was soft and palatable, and, and he was a sweet little boy. He, he studied the scriptures. He read and did all these things. And Esau was like, hey, I'm going hunting. Mm -hmm. Come on. He was more of the worldly man. Esau was more, Jacob was more of the intellect and the spiritual one. But we find that after uh, Esau came to his father, Isaac, while he was on his deathbed, and, and Jacob didn't know that Jacob had already done, came in there and stole his blessing. Stole Hallelujah. We don't like to put the word stole in there, but that's what he did. Hallelujah. He dressed himself up like his, 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 his uh, brother. He, he put some uh, lamb skin on and made itself feel like he was hairy and, and, and then he went into his father hallelujah and he said well you don't sound like him but you feel like him All right. hallelujah some people sound like hallelujah they in church but they dress like they are come on we can put on that extra uh, uh, external stuff to make us look like it but you can tell the difference you can tell the difference out of what you're saying out of what you're speaking so Isaac said, well, I'm not sure what you feel like. Hallelujah. And so he's all right. And he said, well, what about that stew? And he brought him the stew. Now, Rebecca knew what to fix. She knew how, how to feed her man. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So she cooked it up just like uh, Isaac would like to eat it. Uh -huh. And then they gave it to uh, Jacob so he could present it as if he was doing it on behalf of Esau. Okay. And so when he added, he said, well, I'm going to bless you now. Hallelujah. And so when he blessed him, he was actually blessing the younger and not the elder. He was blessing Jacob and not Esau. Yes, yes. And so when Esau did finally come back in from hunting, and he found out that Jacob had went in there. Hallelujah. And he talked to his father, and he began to weep bitterly. Because mm. he realized, he said, look here, y'all named him right. Y'all called him Jacob right. He is a supplanter. He done supplanted me twice. He stole my birthright. No, he stole your birthright. You gave that up. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. You gave that right up. And he gave up his right for a bowl of soup. But he said, now he gave me, he done stole my blessing too. Jesus. You better watch how you offend folks. Because people will be in the heart of stuff in their hearts. Hallelujah. And smile up in your face. And that like is all good. And so he said, look here, I, I'm going to pretend like I'm still his favorite brother. I'm going to pretend like I'm his only brother, right. <laughs> which you are. Hallelujah. But then he goes on, and he, he, he put on this facade. Mm -hmm. But he had in his heart or on purpose that he was going to kill him once his father died. Yeah. Because he loved his father. One thing about Esau, he did love his father. He didn't want to hurt his father by killing his brother. He said, I'll wait till he's dead, and then he don't know nothing about it. Right. Now, he said, I'm going to hurt my father, too, because he took something from me. Well, he gave something away. Right. So when uh, Esau, when Jacob was leaving, the Bible said that Isaac told him, what I, I want you to do is don't go down there and marry anybody out of the land of Canaan. That's what he, said. he said, don't marry them women. Mm -hmm. And Esau heard that. And he said, well, I'm going to get back at my dad, too, because, you know, uh, he did give it away. Yeah. He was the one blessed. He should have known. He should have recognized my voice. Mm -hmm. And so he went and married someone out of the land of Canaan so he could hurt his father in that way. But he had already done plans to kill Jacob once his father died. Mm -hmm. So the hard place is that Jacob was running from something hard. He was running from something that was chasing after him. He was running from some mistakes that he had made in his past. Right. Yes. Yes. 
It's amazing how your mistake can put you in a hard place. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all don't want to talk up in here. Hallelujah. And now you ain't got no choice but to run. You ain't got no choice but to flee. But I'm glad you're in between a rock and a hard place. Hallelujah. That means that you're in a place where you can make a decision. You better know where to lay your head. Oh. <laughs> it shows here that he said, verse 12, And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to the heavens. And, the, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending. Now, you heard this Jacob's ladder, right? Hallelujah. People refer to it as Jacob's ladder. Hallelujah. But here, I find this is him. Hallelujah. Trying to find some comfort after being in a hard place. Oh. Sometimes when you're going through trouble, only thing you want to do is lay down and have a good night rest. Amen. Oh, y'all don't want to talk now. Y'all ain't ever had a bad day? Yeah. A really bad day? You say, I can't wait to get in my bed. I can't wait to rest my head. You've been thinking all day. You've been in all these conferences. You've been in all these meetings. All these ideas going through you. Everybody challenging you. And you say, I just want to rest. Amen. But you better make sure you lay your head on the right pillow. Amen. Because you can be like Samson and put his head in the wrong lap. Yes, yes. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Hallelujah. Delilah was a pillow for him. Yes. Hallelujah. He almost lost his head. Yes. Hallelujah. But so we find him here in this precarious place. Hallelujah. He, he's running. Hallelujah. He's in a, in a hard place right now. But he's trying to get to a better place. He said, if I could just get a little peace. Hallelujah. If I can find just a, a little peace. So he laid down. And he laid down. And then in this. Hallelujah. See, when you lay down in the right place, you can get the right revelation. You don't want to talk right there. If you lay down in the right place, hallelujah, God can bless you. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why you need to pray before you go to sleep. Amen. Come on, talk to me right now. Hallelujah, thank you. Amen. You need to pray before you. You ain't worried about people seeing you on the home screen? Me? <laughs> hallelujah, I just give a little insert. <laughs> but, but, but in between, hallelujah, you have to worry about this all the time. He was dreaming. Mm -hmm. He was concerned. But he laid his head on the right place. Because if you pray before you go to sleep, you put your mind in the right place. But you allow all these worries and all these things that come up into your head before you go to sleep, then you dream about it. Come on, you've been wrestling with it all day. Now you want to dream about it too? Come on, you got to learn how to put this stuff to rest. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I can see Jacob running in front of me. He laid down and going to see some man. Well, it's been a long ride. Hallelujah. But I just need some rest right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm away from my brother right now. Your trouble is over for that day. Hallelujah. Don't need to be putting your trouble on to tomorrow. Amen. The Bible says sufficient is the trouble of the day. Yes. Thank Take no thought for tomorrow. Yes. We worry about stuff we can't control. That's why we got so many suicidal rates going up during this pandemic. You worry about stuff you can't control. Come on. And some of the stuff we, we worry about is stuff we put on ourselves. Amen. And you stressing out about it instead of turning it over to the rock. Give it over to Jesus. So he laid his head down and then the Lord began to minister to him. He's beginning to see angels ascending and descending. And give me verse 13. Watch this. Hallelujah. And behold, the Lord stood above it. Oh, y'all need a shout right there. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. When I'm going to sleep, I want the Lord to stand above me. When I'm resting, I want God to be above me. I want to know that God is watching over it. I done cast my cares upon him. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm going to sleep in peace. All hell breaking loose around me, but I'm going to sleep in peace. He said, Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father. Come on. Come on. He said, I got to make sure you understand who you're talking to. The same one your grandfather told you about. Because I'm pretty sure Jacob, hallelujah, he was one of those that will watch and observe things. Hallelujah. 
though he would pay attention to it, how though when wisdom was being poured out, he was dedicated. Thank you, Lord. Thank he said, and the God of Isaac. He knows the one your father told you of. How do all those stories he told you? Yes, I'm his God too. He's a land where thou lies. Ooh, look at this. To thee will I give it. Hallelujah. You in between a rock and a hard place. And God about to give you the place you at. You worried about what you're going through, and God about to bless you in the midst of what you're going through. Come on. He said, because you find some peace in me right here. He's a land where undowed lies. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. He said, I already made a promise to you. I made it to your father and your grandfather. Hallelujah. And it's going to come to pass through you. Because if God has spoken, he's going to make it happen. Yeah, Hallelujah. So we have to know that this rock that he's laying on, the stone that he's laying on, it's really a symbol of Christ. Amen. Ooh, I don't know about you. Hallelujah. But, but I need that rock. Hallelujah. Because everything else, you better make sure you're on the right rock. Because right. everything else, they call it slipping sand. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that solid rock is where I need to stand. We find out in Exodus, the 17th chapter, at verse 6, that God told Moses to smite the rock. And he said, when you smite the rock, the water will come out. Yeah. See, you got to follow the instruction of God. How do when you get from your hard place to your rock, you got to make sure you listen to the rock. Jesus. Exodus 17 and 6 said, Behold, I will stand before thee, they are putting the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. And there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Now here this rock represents Christ. Because when he was smite, hallelujah, when he was beaten, hallelujah, when he was on the cross, when they pierced him, the Bible said blood and water came out. Come on. And the Bible said that they, people, they drink. I don't know about you, but every time you take a commune, commune you drinking of his blood. Yes, sir. He's on the everlasting water. Hallelujah, the water of life. Hallelujah. So therefore, we drinking of him. Yeah. He is that rock right there. And so God told Moses, I need you to smite it. Because when my son comes, they're going to smite him too. Hallelujah. When they smite him, something's going to come out that's going to bless him. Hallelujah. In case you missed it, what you going through, what's, hell, what's hitting up against you right now, what's beating up against you right now, God's going to use it to bless somebody else. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You crying and complaining about what you're going through. You got to be smitten too. Thanks, Pastor. You know, you can't get no olive oil unless you squeeze olives. You got to crush it. Hallelujah. You got to put it up on your feet and then we'll walk on it. Hallelujah. Then squeeze it all out. There's some things God's squeezing out of you. You didn't realize the hell. Hallelujah. How it was, but it's working for your good. Yes, God. Now I know that when they talk about me, I ain't got to talk back about them. Hallelujah. And you know what they're doing? They're casting coals upon their own head. They don't have a little black rocks. They're just casting coals. Heap, the Bible says, heaping coals upon themselves. So he told them to smite. Hallelujah. We got to follow the instructions of the Lord. But then we pick up the numbers, the 20 days. It amazes me. That how we can listen to God one day. Oh. Hallelujah. Telling us to do something. And then come back and tell us to do something different. Hallelujah. Almost look alike. But watch this. In Numbers 20, 20 and 8. He said, take the rod. That same rod. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The same rod he held up. Hallelujah. In order for the sea to be parted. Hallelujah. The same rod he held up and kept back the enemies. Hallelujah. As long as his hands was lifted up. They prevail against their enemies. It was that same rod he had in his hand. The same rod he threw before the fire. He said, take the rod and gather thy the assembly together. Thou and Aaron, thy brother. And do what? Come on, he ain't say smite this time. 
He says, speak ye to unto the rock. Before their eyes, and they shall give forth his water. See, it was so close to what it was before. Now, sometimes we'll step out just because it looked like the same thing. But God said, no, I don't want you to smite it this time. I need you to speak to it. Yes. He said, speak to the rock. And he gave, and they shall give forth his water. How do that's something you just got to ask God for? Yes. Oh, you ain't got to be beaten about yes. it. You just got to ask him for yes. it. That's good right there. And that's a bring forth to them water out of the rock. Of the Hallelujah. The only rock I know that can bring life yes. is Christ. He said, so thou shalt give the congregation and their pieces to drink. Amen. So therefore we find in Exodus that Moses is smiting it and then Numbers, hallelujah, he's smiting it again. You can't follow the same paths. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Just because it went right one time off of it, don't mean it's going to right the same uh, the second time off of it. We like new things out of path. Well, I was sitting here in this seat last week, and the Holy Ghost fell upon me. So next Sunday, I'm going to sit right here in this spot. And you begin to shake, and you begin to tremble. But it ain't no power. You get up like Samson with your hair cut. Because you're looking for God to show up in the same place, at the same place, at the same thing. But he done told you to move. Yes. And you fight against the move. That's right, that's right. Somebody need to hear that. Quit fighting against the move. Jesus, yes. So he scrubbed the rock this time. Because it looked like the same pattern again. Hallelujah. The last time I went and talked to him, it worked out. God said, don't talk this time, pray. God said, don't, don't pray this time fast. That's right. Come on. God said, oh, don't pray a thousand times. Meditate. Jesus. Because you be going in yourself. God wants you to go in behalf of him. Yes. We got to follow him. Watch this. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 4. Now, after Moses began to realize something. So Moses sang a song about the rock. 32 and 4. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy 32 and 4, Moses sing of God as he is that rock. Is rock. His work is perfect. Yes. For all his ways are judgment. Yes. A, God of, a God of truth and without yes. iniquity. Just yes. and right yes. is who? He. he. Who is he? Jesus. Hallelujah. God, Jesus, the rock. Right. He is our rock. Father. He is our salvation. Father. And Moses began to sing of him. He said, hey, God is our rock. Yes, he, is our he is our provider. Yes. He is our stability in our life. Thank you, God. Thank you. This is our solid rock on which we are standing. Yes. Yes. This is the solid rock I'm holding on to. Yes. They find out that there was this palm tree that went through hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And it would sway in the wind. All the way to the point, it looked like it's about to break over. Right. And they said, How could this be? That this, this, this tree could stand up, up under this pressure. Yeah. Well, they went down and they began to investigate. Yes. They dug around it and they went down real deep yeah. and found out the palm tree done wrapped the root around the rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm wrapped around this rock. You can blow all you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I ain't going nowhere unless this rock moves. Okay. I don't know about you, but I ain't going nowhere unless this rock moves. Yes, God. Yes, God. If this rock ain't yes, moving, I'm standing here right here. I'm yes, anchored God. on the rock. Yes, God. Hallelujah. And the rock is anchored in me. Thank you, God. And so we go down to verse 32, uh, verse 30, in the same chapter. And he done talked about God being the rock. But, you know, we like to quote the scripture, one can put a thousand to fly. Uh -huh. And two can put 10,000 to fly. Hallelujah. But we don't read the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. This was in reference to the enemy putting 10,000 of us to fight with two of them. How can this be, he said? He said, how shall one chase a thousand? And two put 10,000 to fight, except their rock has sold them. Yes. And the Lord has shut them up. In other words, you can't do this without God. You can't put a thousand to fight. You can't put 10,000 to fight unless you got the rock. Put stuff aside. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. But if the rock done sold you out, if the rock done abandoned you, hallelujah, your enemies will put you to flight. Yes. Where before you could put a thousand to flight. Amen. Now, hallelujah, a thousand, you times a thousand is running from one of them. How shall one chase a thousand? He's talking about the enemy. How can two put 10,000 to flight? But God said, look here. If I'm on your side, we'll reverse this order. If I'm on your side, hallelujah, a thousand of them have to flee up under one of you. So when we start quoting it, make sure God is in. When we start quoting it, make sure God is that rock that he's ministering about. So we go on to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, at verse 4. And we find out who this rock really is. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians, 10th chapter, at verse 4. And you'll find that Christ is that rock. Mm -hmm. He said, drink and did all drink the same what? Spiritual. They talk about them in the desert, they are in the wilderness, the same spiritual drink. For they drink of that. Spiritual of that who rock? Spiritual that rock. spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Hallelujah. In between a rock and a hard place. I don't know about you, but you in the right place then. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You no longer in the hard place. You in between. <laughs> oh, come on. Hallelujah. And I know you ain't crazy enough to go back. Yes, God. You complain about the hard place, but you don't want to let go. Yes. Yeah, right there. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm in between. I got a choice. Yes, God. Hallelujah. There's a decision to be made. Yes. You want the hard place or do you want the rock? If you want the rock, leave the hard place behind. Quit putting all your focus on the hard uh, on the hard place. Or what God? God has brought you out. Yes, God. Jesus, yeah. Lord, I don't know about you, but my pillow is about to become my pillow. I said, my pillow is about to become my pillow. That means I got a place that I got security at. You know, they would put up pillows back then as memorials, as testimony. Pillows hold up buildings. Hallelujah. It holds up. It's on a solid foundation, but it will hold it up. Will you take your pillow and turn it into a pillow? Will you take your rock and let him be what holds you up? Aren't you tired of being on slip and stand? Saying? Yes, God. Say, oh, it's sinking saying. Yeah. I know it's, I was like, saying. <laughs> but it's slipping. It, 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 it's sinking saying. Hallelujah. But I thank God I won't sink. Because I'm on a solid foundation. And when you're on a solid foundation, hallelujah, you don't have to worry about the fears of the world. As long as I stay on the rock, hallelujah, I don't have to worry about what the enemy going to do because he got to go through the rock. Hallelujah. He got to come through my Savior in order to get to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost say, when Job, hallelujah, was standing on the rock. Hallelujah. They say that the golden God, the rock. And say, can I challenge him? Yeah. Can I yeah. try him? So he had to go through the rock to test who was on the rock. Y'all don't want to talk up in here. And God said, go ahead. Because he's standing on the rock. Yes. How do I know he won't fail. When everybody starts talking about it, even his friend, he's still standing on the rock. When they give him some foolish advice, he's still standing on the rock. When he lose everything around him, he's still standing. Yes. He said, I ain't going to curse the rock. This is the only thing that keeps me from sinking. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Get out there quick. Oh, well, as I was saying, slipping. Slipping back into the old ways. Y'all don't want to talk right there. But it's easy to slip back into things. You can sink in it, but you also can slip back into things. How do you find your conversation has changed? You, sign, you find your study habit has changed. Your praise has changed. One of the first things the enemy takes away is your praise. Yes. 
now. You don't praise him like you used to. Hallelujah, there was a time when you used to shout. Hallelujah, there was a time when you used to dance. Hallelujah, there was a time you didn't care what they say. Hallelujah, yes, God. Hallelujah, what they say about you. Yes, God. You still going to give God his praise. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of a sudden now, yeah, when they start talking about you, you want to complain. You want to murmur about it. How did the so-and-so say this about me? And they say that about me. Then he just stand. How did they stand on the road? Jesus, I'm sure they're going to talk about you. Yes, God. Don't let their lie become a prophecy to you. Glory. A self-fulfilling prophecy. You start believing what they're saying. Hallelujah. Now, I know that's not the report of the Lord. Yes, God. Hey, I know that's not the report of the Lord. Who report shall I believe? Yes, God. That's it right there. Hallelujah. After you finish all your lives, I'll still be standing. Yes. After you keep on talking about me and belittling me and, and, and discredit my name, I'm still going to be standing. Hallelujah. No matter what you say, it's not going to change. What God has said to me, and I'm going to stand upon it. I don't care. All hell break loose around me. I'm still going to stand upon it. Yes, God. You can try to manipulate me any kind of way you want to, but I'm still going to stand. Yes. Hallelujah. They think they can shut you down when they talk about you. Oh, you won't preach now, preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know what you did. Hallelujah. But I repent. Yes, God. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lord, forgive me. I'm going on from that mess. Thank you. And you don't move on. But they're still trying to control you from your past mistakes. From your past messed up. And you fall right into it. Well, preach, I don't hear you preaching no more on Facebook. What happened, Manifest? Manifest, you was up there every day preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. They had a bunch of following people following. But they begin to see a change in you. Jesus. See, we don't realize it, but people see it. Oh, yeah. It was like, wait a minute. I ain't saw you in a whole year. And so, therefore, it begin to say something about you. Hallelujah. We got to be able to praise God regardless of what we're going through. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you messed up. Stay on that rock. Justify you messed yes, up. Hallelujah. Don't just uh, you know what we do? We we, we tell people who, who, who we know we can get a, 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 a green ear with. <laughs> yes, man. But those ain't the one that was offended by you. The one that's truly offended by you. How those are the ones you really need to be talking yeah. to. That's it, that's it. Preach, preach up. Ooh, in my last scripture. Well, mm. And the rock was Christ. Matthews 16 and 8. Because we got to bring this thing home. Here we find that Jesus called Peter a rock. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's 18. I said 16 and 18. Yes, yes. Praise God. Matthew 16 and 18. So Peter called. He said, and I say unto, you, unto thee that thou art Peter. Peter. What is Peter? Rock. The rock. Come on. He said, thou art Peter. Peter, Peter right? Rock. Stone. And upon the, he said, I'm talking to the rock about being on the rock. He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will what? Build my church. Build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I told you, you better be careful. Yes, you better God. know, hallelujah, when you lay your head out, who you got your trust in. Yes, God. So you can be the rock that stand on the rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I can build my church over this rock because it's on a solid foundation. You know, one of the first things they look for when they're building, hallelujah, a place. They Check the make foundation. Sure it's on a good foundation. Yes, God. Because if it's not solid, hallelujah, if it's not sturdy enough, it can't hold it. You, the tallest building must have the most solid foundation. Yes. They say some of the tallest buildings, you got to go down just as deep on their foundation right. for what they're holding up. Ah, I come to tell you today, our rock is big. Yeah. 
Yeah. I walk is strong. Yeah. I walk is mighty. Yes. I walk and hold anything. I don't care what kind of problems you got. I walk and hold it. I don't care how many get on it. You can hold it all. The whole foundation of everything. A pun this rock, a yes. pun this stone, a pun this rock, I will build my church. Hallelujah is a rock, I'm talking to you. Yes. Are you the rock? Hallelujah. Are you still a hard place? Mm. Aren't you tired of a hard place? Always testifying on you, Jesus. on behalf of you? Yes, God. When will the rock testify on your behalf? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to shout with me today, but between a rock in a hard place. People look at it as a bad thing. I look at it, hey, hallelujah. At least I ain't in that hard place anymore. All right. Come on. At least I'm in a place that I can make a decision. Come on. Hallelujah. That's going to affect my life and my children's life, my family's life, everybody around me life. Hallelujah. I'm in a place right now. I told y'all on Wednesday, that was one of my prayers. When people were coming to church, I would pray they would get in between a rock and a hard place. Yes. Hallelujah, so they can make a choice. Because in the hard place, the only thing they hear is hard things. Y'all don't want to Come talk on. right there. When you're in the hard place, the only thing you hear is what you don't mess up in. That's the only thing taught you is confusion. But when you're in between, I ain't influenced by the enemy right now. I ain't got to die yet, but at least I got a chance I can hear. Yeah. When I'm in the hard place, I can't hear him. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, if a person drowning and you talk about we got steaks, <laughs> they can't hear that. Oh, I'm cooking you some steaks and some ribs and, and some lobster. Oh, yeah, all of it sitting on the bridge waiting for you to come up there. Man, they just trying to get out of that hard place. Yes, God. I'm drowning right now. Only thing I can hear is water. Yeah. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah. That's it. And once you bring out of it, hallelujah. So you got to learn to pray, hallelujah, that people can get in a place where they can make that decision. Yeah. Hallelujah. Choose God over their hard place. Yeah. Choose the rock. Hallelujah. That rock is Christ. Yes. And when that rock talk to you, hallelujah. you got to listen. Hallelujah. When that rock speak to you, you got to follow the instructions. Yes. Don't be like Moses. Mm. Moses was a man. Okay. And he was a righteous man. Yes. He was a holy man. But yet still, he got caught up in religion. Because yes, he, <laughs> he did the same thing he'd done before. And God don't always work the same way. Yes. Now God is consistent. Mm -hmm. But God had another plan for him. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. And y'all know what happened to Moses? He didn't get into the promised land until the New Testament. That's it. <laughs> what do you mean? Hallelujah. Because well, God took him up on a high plate, put him up on a rock, let him look at all the land and say, you can see it, but you can't go in. <laughs> the next time we find that Moses is actually in the promised land is on the day of transfiguration. Where he was up there with Elijah and Jesus. Hallelujah. And one looked like Moses. And one looked like Elijah. And they were standing right there with Jesus. That was in the land of Canaan. The promised land. But in the natural he couldn't get there. I don't know about y'all. I want to get there in the spirit. And in the natural. Hallelujah. We can have some heaven right down here on this earth. Yeah. We don't have to have hard days all the time, hard troubles all the time, chaos all around us, confusion all around. We can be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I ain't going to be ashamed of what God doing in my life. I know he moved me out of a hard place. And I fell upon the rock. And the Bible says you fall upon the rock or the rock will fall upon you. I don't know my job. I'd rather fall on the rock. There's a rock to fall on me. Because the rock fall on you are crushed. That's judgment. It's done. But when you fall on the rock, you can have mercy, Lord. I know you are God of mercy. You are God of grace. I fall upon you, oh Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I don't want to be crushed by whatever 
I'm going through. But if I'm standing on that rock, if I'm believing and trusting in him, for he is the rock of my salvation, whom shall I fear? He is my salvation. He is my strong tower. Well, he's my fortress. You know, in those days, fortress was made out of rocks. They would take the stones and put them together and use the Masonic techniques that were put it together. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but a rock, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all ever heard the story of the three little pigs? <laughs> yes. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh, how that story go? They started off with what? A house made out of straw? Hallelujah. And, 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 the, and the wolf came and he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. And then they say the next one got a little smaller. Hallelujah. And he built his out of what? Oh, uh, sticks. Hallelujah. And then what happened? The wolf came along and he puffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. But the next one was a little bit smarter. What he did? He built it with brick. What a brick? Ain't him a rock. Hallelujah. And he put them together and he built. And guess what the wolf did? As he had done before, he huffed uh, and he puffed uh, and he tried to blow the house down. Good, good, good. And when he got finished huffing and puffing, mm -hmm. still standing. Because I'm on a solid foundation. Oh, when the enemy blowing his hardest breath, mm, yeah, you're going through your roughest time. Hallelujah, he's blowing every kind of way. That's that boisterous wind, uh, Rolanda. Hallelujah, when Peter, that rock was walking on water, that boisterous wind started talking to it. There ain't nothing but Satan, hallelujah. There ain't nothing but the devil trying to blow on you. Hallelujah, to get you off course. Thank you, Lord. And some yield. Yeah. But if you just stand. Damn. Hallelujah. Yeah, the rock calling you out on the water.
Christ is that spiritual rock. Yes, Lord. That's where we need to stand. I hope this word has found someone who may be tuned in. Maybe you just browsing and ran across it, and the Holy Spirit spoke to you. Yes. And you was in a hard place, or you are in a hard place, but you heard something that had hope in it. And we don't want hope deferred. And because you heard it, God is now ready to heal you, to bring you out of this thing. Because the only thing now you have to do is just fall upon the rock. And he'll give you water. He'll give you life. The woman at the well was in a hard place. But she fell upon the rock. And he gave her everlasting life. He said, you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. Because he said, I am the living water. I am the water of life. And so right now, your hard place, hollow, is not too hard for God. Just trust him. Fall on your knees right now. Give yourself to God. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Forgive me for all my transgression. I knew you died for my sin. You were smitten for me. You were beaten and bruised for me. All my transgression, all my iniquity. Lord, I thank you right now. You bear it for me. And I know you got up out of this. You stand. Yes, God. And now I want you to stand in me. Come dwell in my heart. Live with inside of me. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And watch God give you the wisdom to come out of those places. Watch God give you the wisdom not to return to it. When you about to say some of the things you used to say, Hallelujah, I can't talk like that no more. Hallelujah, I don't want to talk like that. Thank you. It's not you can't, it's just you won't. I still can smoke, but I just won't. Y'all don't want to talk up in there. There's some things you still can do, but you just don't do it anymore. The desire in your heart is not to do it anymore. And you are saved. If you receive that prayer of salvation, acknowledge it. The Bible says, be not ashamed of me before men, and I'll be not ashamed of you before my Father. Let it be known. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. I receive that prayer. I receive salvation. Don't let anybody think, make you feel small. I thought you was already saved. You go to church. What they got to do with it? Lot? The devil go to church. I say this in my closing. There was this uh, this man. Hallelujah. He, there was this church, and, and this, there was this man sitting on the outside, and, and uh, this other man came up, and and they wouldn't let him in. And so he looked over at the other guy, and he said, they won't let you in? And, and it turned out he was talking to the devil. The devil said, they won't let me in there either. <laughs> Hallelujah. And some places they don't want to receive. But I thank God. It doesn't matter what you have gone through. God will receive you. Mighty God, we serve an awesome God. And Lord, I thank you right now. Raise your hands, Lord. Have your way in the service. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our minds, Lord. Always bring us back to the rock, Lord. We know that Christ is our rock. He's our spiritual rock. Hallelujah. We shall not be moved. Hallelujah. These spiritual attack us. We shall not be moved. When things come up against your word, we shall not be moved. No matter what the world is saying, we shall stand upon your rock on this solid foundation. God, I thank you right now for keeping us from slipping or sinking. God, I thank you right now, oh God. 
Hallelujah. For keeping our minds and our hearts right now, oh God. Have your way right now. Let us be rocks like Peter. Let us be resolved in our conviction. Let us be resolved in our faith. Let us be resolved in you. That no matter what comes our way, we will trust and believe in you. We will say that thou art rock and you are perfect. Yes, God. In all your ways. We give you praise right now, Lord. No matter what the enemy try to rock against us, we stand on the rock. Hallelujah. No matter what news he brings our way, it shall not rock us. Because we will rock. And God, I give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. For those who still on Facebook and still stay around, please share a like and um, make a comment. Share it with someone you may know. We love you, and we give you an open invitation to come out and join us. It's time to come out. You've been in church or out of church for so long. It's not like fellowship. It's not like being in an environment with love, with like spirit, being in fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord, to gather with the saints. So I encourage you to come and join us. Um, be a part of them. Be kind. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. Yeah. So come together. I know you said, well, I'm here by DIA, Facebook, but we'd rather your presence be right yeah, here too. You, it's not like being in the presence. You know, when someone has a surgery in the surgery room, you in the hospital, but you ain't in the surgery room. They have a surgery here, but you over here, you're still in the hospital. It's not like being in that place. You feel the faith in the spirit that's moving. So we encourage you, we love you, and you be blessed until the next time. May the Lord be with you.